it only lasted 15 seconds. But 30 years after Loma Prieta, the deadly quake continues to have a lasting impact on the Bay Area. Good evening. I'm Alan Martin. And I'm Veronica Della Cruz for the KPX5 Cruise in the field that day, October 17th, 1989. Still feels like yesterday. It does, and that includes former anchor Wendy Takuda. Now let's try again to uh, Wendy Takuda at Candlestick Park. Wendy? Okay, Dave, I can hear you and I can see that now we're getting a signal. You have to be patient with us because technically there's things are just oh, very, very shaky out here. It was quarter about 5.05 when we felt a good sized earthquake here. It felt like it lasted about 30 seconds. Um, and right where we are, amongst all of the reporters and the different TV stations out here, we were all became aware very quickly that we had lost power, not only within our trucks, but had lost uh, connection with the station. And of course, our understanding is that the stations were off the air for a time as well. Um, the information, the police are trying to get by me here, so I'm going to move over a little bit to the side. People are still very, very anxious out here. Um, it's sort of a strange mood because people are excited about the game, but still wondering how big this earthquake was and a lot of questions about how bad it was. I've had people uh, who were inside the stick come out and tell us that they felt like the whole thing was going to come down. So that's how scary it was out here. As I said, things are now beginning to calm down a bit. Uh, the fans are beginning to talk about the Giants and the A's again. Um, but when it was going on, I can tell you, you could see the asphalt actually waving. Wow. <sighs> Wendy Dakuda joins us now oh. with Ken Bastida. And Ken, you and I had a chance to talk Amazing. about this the other day. Lots of memories. Wendy, I'm sure you have lots of stories that you'd like to share as well. Well, I remember... I remember that concrete going like, like this. a wave. Yeah. And the microwaves on our truck uh -huh. started to wave like this. And we mm. began to move away from the trucks God. because we realized that they would fall. But it's interesting that live chat was early enough that we had no idea how bad it was. Mm -hmm. And then we began to get reports yeah. that the Bay Bridge had fallen. Yeah, was, that was that was the way yeah. it was first reported. It was, it was so surreal because things kept coming in, and, and I was at KCBS radio right. and got sent right. to the bridge and couldn't cross it. Um, and there was liquefaction near the toll plaza where sand and water had come up and flooded the toll plaza and then the water went back down oh. and left the sand there. Oh. It was the eeriest thing. And then I got to the Cypress structure and ran right. into uh, Doug Murphy, who right. was a great reporter. Yeah. Um, and he, uh, he talked about, uh, you know, he says, Kenny, you're not going to believe this. Look, look, look what's going on. We both stood there in awe and looked at this. Smoke was coming out from the gap between the yeah, two sections of pancaked, freeway. Pancake. Like and we that. talked about this uh, a minute ago how mm. people, regular, ordinary people, climbed up ladders and went into that while there were aftershocks happening and it was squeezing up and down. People risking their lives to save other people. You know, Just amazing. Um, Ken and I were talking about how a catastrophe like this can bring out the best. In people, and we sh certainly saw that in the Bay Area, and it was an interesting thing too, working at this TV station at that time, because television became sort of a unifier, uh, you know, of, of a larger community. And um, I, I was listening to what Len Ramirez said earlier, and I so agree with him that um, I hope we can f find those commonalities yeah. again. You know, does it does it, does it have to be a tragedy that makes us realize that we have that much in common? The, but, the damage that, that you're looking well, there, at now in some, that's of, some of the old camp. videotape and yeah. stuff, that's the cypress structure right there. Right. It's, it's mind-boggling that this happened in 8 to 15 seconds. This is, didn't occur over a long period of time. This was instantly you had freeways collapsing. You had, look at the size of the rebar. It's got to be two inches thick. Yeah. Bending, twisting, the noise it made, the sound, the ground rumbling. Was, I just, it was I'll, like never, a, it, I'll never hear it again. It was like a train coming through. It was so strange. It was like a train coming through. And then also people who are new to the Bay Area in San Francisco, we had another freeway that was built exactly like that. <laughs> right outside right the door. Here, <laughs> right outside right the door Barcadero, here. Right in And it took many, many years to, to argue, to take, well, we took that down. We knew that was dangerous. Mm -hmm. Once we took it down, there were these huge civic discussions about what we would replace it with and now we have this gorgeous uh, embarcadero yeah. but yeah. you know the, that structure uh, you know, that structure was at great risk of, of the same thing happening sure. had that earthquake uh, lasted there any were longer. overpasses that collapsed there were um, you know streets that ripped open the marina district on the marina fire district. there was no 
uh, we saw, well, there's, there's the, the first little fire that started right there behind the Palace of Fine mm -hmm. Arts, so probably on Pierce Street or one of those uh, right there in the marina. That grew and grew. Now, you got to remember, there was no power in San Francisco. There were no lights on. And it was getting dark quickly. This was right. after mm -hmm. five o'clock, and, and this here is you go, you fall. See it getting dark. This is October. fall, so go outside right. and see what it looks like at seven. Mm -hmm. okay? you, you know what was interesting? I, I, mean, I remember driving back from Candlestick. It was Joe Fonzi and I uh, driving back with a crew from Candlestick back to the station. Pitch dark, no no traffic lights. So you kind of creep along, and the streets are empty. It was this, the most surreal Strange. feeling. And then once we came in, and these this news began to come in about. Uh, the marina on fire. Santa Cruz, do you remember the tent city? Santa Cruz, uh, downtown Santa Cruz, in several, tents? several fatalities in the buildings that collapsed the there. Really Los right. Gatos, we saw homes. These are the ensuing days. These are days okay. after where yeah. we finally got to the outlying areas and uh, homes in Los Gatos had come off their foundations and skidded down the street. Uh, it's completely intact. And uh, it's just, it just mind-boggling. And Santa Cruz had to basically be rebuilt. Downtown Santa Cruz yeah. had to be totally rebuilt. It's really something, you know. Last but I, but I, I think that, that I love the thing that you remember the most of how ordinary people became heroes that day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Selfless. And how we realize how much we all have in common and this community that we love so well, much. Well, and people here and everywhere around, because I wasn't living here, I was in the Midwest, but I'm from California. I knew what an You're earthquake California was. California boy. Yeah. And I told them, and they <laughs> couldn't believe that in a few seconds people's lives changed like that. Absolutely. Yeah. But it, it did, yeah. just yeah. like that. Right. Oh. We 40, learned a lot. 42 died in, yeah. that, in that Cypress structure and more. Um, Many in more in the, the earthquake. Bay. Right. Yeah. But we've learned a lot. We're better for it. Let's hope so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Ken and Wendy, guys, thank you guys so much. Great insight. Really appreciate it. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. <laughs> okay, see you, Wendy. Wendy. Thanks.